Hey everybody, I'm out here this afternoon with Captain Johnny Stabile and we are looking for some peacock bass and some clown knife fish possibly, so hang with us and let's see what we catch. Guys, we just arrived at our first spot where we're gonna fish. We're in about 20 feet of water and we're gonna drop some baits down. These fish have a tendency to jump, so just be conscientious if it jumps. You just wanna bow that rod to it a little bit if it is a clown knife. These fish are really crazy. They swim backwards, so that's why you get a lot of that constant tension. Oh yeah, it's a big old clown knife. There we go, right in the net. Oh. Wow, that's a big, oh my gosh, that's a real big one. Holy cow, you just flopped right out of the net. Might be one of the bigger ones I've seen this year. Good job, Gary. Nice fish. I don't think this one's as big as that one. That one is a monster. You think it's a clown knife? Yeah, it's staying down like a clown. Great, sure is fighting like a clown. Yep. Yep, it sure is. Double header clown knife all by yourself. Good job. Sweet. So clown knives are air breathers. You'll see them come up and gulp. So it's not going to hurt him to lay here on the deck a minute while we get both of them caught and put up. And we will throw them back. You see the teeth on his tongue right there? When I push it up like that, the teeth come out. They're right there on his tongue. And they go back in when we let his, tooth, his mouth back down. But those are pretty wicked. He comes up and grabs the bait, and then with this fin, he turns it in reverse, and he swims backwards away from you. But that's a pretty wicked thing when his teeth come up out of that tongue. See, they, they go back in when I let it back down, and then when you pop it back up and he's gonna bite something, he puts that tongue up and grabs it, and that's how he gets a hold of your shad. And got a small mouth and head compared to the body, that one Johnny's got over there is about twice the size that I caught a minute ago. And that's the big boy right there. Gary, this is probably your personal best clown. Yeah, that looks like my best clown. Good Pretty job. nice double. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good way to start out your trip, huh? Oh, yeah. Personal best on yep. a double header. Yep. It's I awesome. Mean, it's I just mean, beginning. Only thing been better if we'd had three rods out instead of two. <laughs> Cool. We're going back down, see if we can catch some more. I got one on. I don't think he's big, but he's near the trolling motor, Johnny. I got the trolling motor off for yeah. you. Yeah, he's a little guy. Peacock. A little pea. Oh yeah, we can both flip him. <laughs> little guy. Well, for that's peacock. Stark. Pop that hook right out there. Nice little guy. We'll get him back in the water real fast. Try to get on a bigger one, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll get on something bigger than that. All right, here it goes. Got another one? Yeah. Awesome. You found the biomass. This one may not be much bigger than that last one, but I'm bringing them in. Well, you know, we got to start small, work our way up. <laughs> this fish right here is about a year old. They get up to about a pound within the first year. And he's not quite a pound, so he might not be less than a year old, but, uh, oh. There he goes.
Got him on the artificial, first cast. He's not big, but uh, I will definitely take him. I like to use caution and use some pliers because uh, I've never been hooked. Almost got me. I've Boca, never been hooked Boca. worse than, uh, than by a small peacock with some treble hooked in its mouth. I'll keep the pliers handy, because I have a feeling I'm gonna catch another one. Or I just jinxed myself by saying that. He keeps trying to grab it, and he can't get it. Man, we could just have a whole set of these guys. They're all the same size. No. Off he goes. I got robbed on that one. He hit it hard. Really? He didn't get the hook. Let's see if I can get him to pick it back up. Man, that one hit fast. He was waiting on a bait. They come unhooked sometimes. Those clown knives have got a pretty hard mouth. So when you hook them, sometimes they just don't, the hook doesn't set good. And then there you are, you got, he gets off. When you're fishing with those live shad like that, if a fish comes by too close to them, they get all nervous, they'll start twitching the line. That's usually when you're about to get bit. He got nervous, but we didn't get him. Pretty little fish. It's every day that we went out to fish, and he filmed everything, and uh, he told us a lot of stuff. He said, like, you need to stand there, and you need to do this, and, you know, and, and when the fish comes in, you need to look like this, and, you know, he kind of coached us a lot. And I was telling him, I said, man, you won't believe how different it is when you have a camera person. Because then we're not trying to hold the GoPro with one hand and, and hold the fish with the other and all the fun stuff we try to do. I mean, we'll still do some GoPro stuff of our own, but man, it's awesome to have somebody to help shoot. When I was four, my mom and dad bought me a big dip net and a pair of rubber boots. And I used to go out there in South Texas after the big rain and go through all the big puddles <laughs> where, looking for fish. And I'd find all kinds of little catfish and stuff in those puddles. Yeah, I and bet. that was, you know. Is that, where, is that where your love of catfishing came from? I don't know. I just love catching big old catfish. They're just fun, you know, and it's relaxing. You get your rods all out like we got right now and you sit. Take it easy, shoot the bull, and then you get a fish. Johnny says I'm always monotone. <laughs> You're not always monotone, but you know, you get camera fright, everybody gets it. So we worked on a TV show. Um, we got, uh, I think, seven episodes filmed, and then we had some things change with uh, the boat and the friends that we had in our camera guy's life. So we uh, never did get it on air, but we filmed uh, several shows of a uh, catfishing show. It was a lot of fun. We had our camera guy on the boat all the time and he was an hilarious guy and uh, we just had a lot of fun filming that show. You know. Didn't you meet, uh, who'd you meet when you were filming that? I forgot. Bill Dance. We oh, went to dinner yeah. with Bill Dance and spent some time with him. Went to Bass Pro shopping with him one day and uh, people were like, is that guy with y'all Bill Dance? I said, yeah, that's Bill Dance. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. That's awesome. And he's an awesome guy. I mean, you talk about fishing. Everything about his life has helped fishing all over the world. I mean, 
he was uh, responsible for a lot of the catfishing legislation that Tennessee has, which is why they have an awesome catfishing fishery. Always freaks me out when I come down here and see all these iguanas. There's like eight right there on that seawall, just hanging out. I uh, had a knee surgery coming up and uh, I had started watching some YouTube and I saw Johnny on the YouTube and I sent him a message and I said, hey, uh, I'm really interested in catching a peacock bass. And I had been down here a bunch of times in uh, West Palm area and had tried to catch some peacock bass and uh, finally did catch one about this big in a canal up there, but I never caught like a bunch of them or a real big one. So I messaged him, well, he messaged me back and I said, okay, well, I got knee surgery coming up and in a couple of weeks after that, I get on physical therapy. As soon as they release me, I'm coming down. So I got the surgery done. I looked at my physical therapy times, went ahead and booked a trip with him. I came down and, uh, we caught, I think, 48 fish that day, me and him and Adam. Johnny had a fire on his boat the week before I got down here, so he had to call a friend, and we went on his friend's boat with his friend, and we went fishing. And we wore out the peacock that day. It was over in another part of the lake here, and it was just awesome. Well, from then on, I booked a few more trips with him and a couple more trips, and then uh, it was kind of, we just got to be friends, and. Uh, we went to Kentucky and Alabama fishing together. Then he went to Alaska with me last year. And uh, we went to Brazil together. So we just, uh, we're fishing buddies now and uh, we do all this stuff and it's awesome. Get that guy hooked just like that. Nice little threadfin shad in the water and uh, Gary cast it out like towards where you saw that boil there. Was that where the bull was? No. Let me get it. Let me slide this over a little bit. Just keep, keep him in the water. Did y'all catch the peas earlier today on bottom too? Oh my God, we got like 40. I know, but they were on bottom. Y'all weren't right, throwing baits at the dock. Right where we started. Oh man. Yesterday we were over at Lake Okeechobee. Like three manatees rolled right behind the boat. I was like, and we turned around just to see one of them like come nearly all the way out of the water. I said, God, I didn't even know they had manatee in Lake Okeechobee. <laughs> and there were three of them went behind the boat. Yeah, our plan is to go out to Lake Havasu and catch some giant bluegills. I love catching panfish. I mean, I can sit and catch panfish all day. Uh, I like catching big monster fish and catfish and stuff like that too, but uh, it's just something about taking worms and catching panfish. I've taught thousands of kids to fish. Um, I used to work with the FFA and had a lot of kids that every summer at camp, we teach them to fish and make sure, you know, they caught their first fish there. So that was pretty awesome. Including me. You taught me how to catch my first panfish on a worm. Yeah. I <laughs> never used Johnny a worm before. Me and Johnny were fishing one day and we, uh, I said, well, let's stop in this bait shop and get some worms. He said, okay. And we got out there and I put a worm on and we threw it out and I think I caught a spotted tilapia. And I told him, I said, well, put one on. We'll see what else we can catch. And Johnny was like, I never have fished it with worms in my whole life. I grew up in South Florida. We used live bait and lures and stuff. We never used worms. And so sure enough, me and him caught like 75 fish in two hours that afternoon <laughs> using worms. It was fun. That's right. We were catching spotted tilapia, big brim. You caught that little jewel cichlid and then you put it on the line and caught a big peacock bass out of that pipe. That was a good time. That was a fun day. We had been riding around all day looking for Midas cichlids and we just didn't know what we didn't know back then about Midas cichlids. We picked the wrong day, the wrong weather, and everything else. Well guys, it's getting late. We're about to wrap it up for the day here at Lake Ida. We've caught a bunch of peacock bass. We caught my new personal best clown knife fish today and a couple other clowns. We've had a great time. Hit the like button and we'll see you on the next video.